what's up guys welcome back to hmht so finally we have a new update when it comes to mac os pixel 11.3 the update that i actually have already updated to is mac os pixel 11.3 beta 5 now as you can see here at the time i'm recording this video this update is available to developer beta testers and to public beta testers so irregardless of the profile you have this is an update that you can search up and download over the air but this is not all that apple released today actually if we go to safari and go to the apple developer website as you can see here on march 23rd 2021 you can see a ton of updates were released by apple so the release of course mark west pixel 11.3 beta 5 this is the video for that and they also released ios and ipad os 14.5 beta 5 and watch os 7.4 beta 5 was also released and lastly tv os 14.5 beta 5 now if you look carefully at these updates you notice that they all have something in common so let's zoom in a little bit so you see mac os it has something that has a build number that ends with an a so this is an a build and then ios is an a build and ipad os is an a build watch os it's an a build and guess what tv os is also an a build so all these beta updates that were released today have build numbers that end with an a which tells you how close we are when it comes to the official release of all these updates and this is not just all that apple released today by the way if we go to the application you'll notice that iWorks was updated and also i believe classroom for ipad 3.4 beta 2 was also released so that's what apple managed to release today and if you update your devices you'll be able to see a quite a good number of changes and new significant features so quickly let's go into the about this mark section and see what else changed when it comes to this update so for me i actually want to show you the update size if we go to uh, this screen here and go fast forward here you'll be able to see the update size so it came in for me at around 2.53 gigs and this is for my 2016 15 inch macbook pro and i was actually updating from mac os pixel 11.3 beta 4 if you are coming from a different version keep in mind that you will see a different update size and also if you are for example coming from like mac os pixel 11.2 then your update size is going to be significantly larger somewhere maybe like five to eight gigs so keep that in mind and that's how this update size came in for me on my macbook and now let's go to see the new build number that came with this update so if you go to the about this mark section and go here you can see the new build number and it says version 11.3 beta it's good that it says beta on some other uh, updates it actually doesn't bring out this beta so you can see that it has it and you can see that the build number actually shows you don't have to click here in order to see the build number it shows there and as you can see the build number that we have is 20e5217a we have an a at the end and before that we actually had the build number that was 20E5210C and that was on beta 4. So in a sense, this beta 5 coming from beta 4 took two steps in the positive direction, which is a very, very good thing. And now we want to see how much storage this update is taking. It just takes a moment to load as you can see here. And basically there it is, system is taking up 16.4 gigs so that's the storage being taken up by the update in itself it sort of went up a little bit by a few megabytes because before on beta 4 system was taking 16.39 gig but as you can see it's more or less the same it's not something that we should sit here and cry about now we want to look at the new features and changes that came with this mac os pixel 11.3 beta 5 the first one that i have to highlight it was actually an article that was found by uh, 9 to 5 mark and this is the um this is the article that i'm 
I'm talking about here. It says new Apple Silicon Mac iMac referenced in latest Mac OS 11.3 beta. So we have this beta five. That's the update that we we have today that I'm talking about. And the reference code that was identified in this update are identified as iMac 21.1 and iMac 21.2. Now. This is reference code within the OS in itself. Shout out to 9to5Mac. They always bring out fire articles like this, referencing source code when it comes to Mac OS. And just in case you are curious, these 21.1 and 21.2, you can see that uh, they almost try to depict like screen sizes, but it's worth mentioning that these numbers are not related to display sizes so it's good if you're waiting for a new iMac or if you're looking forward to buying a new iMac then I would sort of hold on a little bit until we get more clarity when it comes to this it's obvious that you know Apple usually does this sometimes when they're trying to hint that something is coming in future and you know on the Apple uh, store on their website. Sometimes they do sell out or remove some of their marks recently. Keep an eye on that. So it's trying to hint that we could be getting new iMacs. And uh, it's actually interesting because this article goes on to reference also the A14X chip that will likely be used in the next um, generation iPad Pro. And also that these new iMacs that could be coming could both be the 21.5 inch and the 27 inch models that will be updated sometime this year. Could be in April at an April event or sometime later. When that comes out, we'll be able to tell you uh, right here on YouTube. And then something else that um, I should highlight that has been updated, of course, with this uh, macOS Pixel has to do with iWorks application. So when I'm talking of iWorks, I'm basically referring to these applications that you are seeing here. So numbers, keynote, and pages. And if you open any of the apps here, you'll be welcomed by a new splash screen so when you open numbers this is a splash screen that you basically come up to and it will tell you what's new and you can get you know get started as you can see and all these have been updated it's not just numbers if we go to keynote you can see that keynote 2 has been updated let's give it a moment to open if we click continue you'll be able to see what's new with keynote so collaboration keynote live uh, gorgeous themes stunning animation icloud drive these have been updated and let's look at the last application here pages so let's give it a moment to load. We just close these as it loads up here. So what's new in pages? Play YouTube video and Vimeo videos right in your documents and caption and titles easily add descriptive text and images videos, shapes, and other objects. So that is what's new in Keynote. These iWork application are actually very, very convenient if you use them on a regular basis. These are not something that I use often. So most of these changes are actually, to me, they are good, but it's not something that's that significant. I believe when it comes to Keynote, it's more like PowerPoint, you know, Microsoft PowerPoint, and then numbers is more like Excel. So this one is more like Excel. And the good thing about these, they are not paid and these are free applications. So it's good. And I believe these applications at the moment require Mac OS 10.15 or higher. So you need to have Mac OS 10.15 or higher in order to enjoy the new features and changes that came to these iWorks application. And it's good that Apple continues to keep this application free and accessible to all, which is an amazing thing. Also, we want to look at the other thing that changed when it comes to Mac OS Pixel 11.3. So this doesn't specifically only refer to beta 5, but it refers to Mac OS Pixel 11.3. And you can see that it includes game controller emulation for iPhone and iPad apps on M1 Mac. And basically what this feature enables or allows, it makes it easier to map iOS and iPad OS apps to keyboard keys and mouse buttons. So you can easily you know, copy this layout and try to bring or emulate your iOS or iPadOS apps so that they can easily be played and mapped on different joysticks 
or controllers when it comes to Apple Silicon M1 Max. The ecosystem keeps getting more stronger and stronger as you can see here. Now, also, I noticed that another change that came with this update, if we open a new tab and open some Apple website, like if I open Apple Developer, I'm being prompted to sign in with my fingerprint and it's not only that but if I go to the about this mark section and go to where it says support right there so we just give it a moment to load you can see that there's still a bug where support takes some time I believe on beta 4 it was instant but right here you can see it takes some time if you click on details or get support you are sometimes welcomed by a fingerprint metric login which is quite good and you won't have to type in your passcode it's something that i noticed on this beta 5 on beta 4 i had to manually type in my passcode and this is the last thing that i should mention that has been updated it's an app that basically i use a lot and it has to do with spotify so if you use spotify quite a lot it's been updated for uh, ios for mac os and for android so it has to do with the way you can sort of sort your songs by different genres so it's more of a spotify update and not a mac OS update in this case but other than that those seem to be the new features and changes that came with this update i should mention that there are some bugs that i'm experiencing at this time and the first one has to do with airdrop so airdrop is actually not working on this update at all so since beta 4 my airdrop has been having issues whether i said you know to receive from everyone or to contact exclusively i'm still having issues with airdrop so that's one of the bugs that i'm experiencing here and the next thing if we open imovie if we open a project and try to export a project and say export right there takes a moment to load but you can see that the bug that was actually there where we had text overlay has been sort of fixed so that's a good fix before we had resolution running over into like 1080p or compress running into uh the faster portion or you know you would write a name and something like that and it would overlay and it wouldn't look that pretty at all so that bug has been fixed and i'll keep looking around and try to dig what are the more new features and changes that came with this update and i'll be able to do a follow-up video so when it comes to performance i actually ran geekbench 5 scores just to make sure i get the correct figures and compare this to beta 4 on how it's performing so i actually ran this geekbench score uh earlier on so just after updating and i made sure no applications or something that were going to hinder my progress was running in the background and basically when it comes to cpu on mac os pixel 11.3 beta 5 let's look at the scores that i got so on beta 5 i got a score of 755 for single core and on multi core i got a score of 3152 comparing this to what i had on beta 4 for single core on beta 4 i had a score of 743 and for multi-core i had a score of 3030 so you can see that this update beta 5 is actually way way ahead on both multi-core and single core compared to beta 4 so it's a plus when it comes to uh, cpu performance and when it comes to gpu performance i also ran geekbench uh, 5 just to see how good this update is compared to beta 4 and on beta 5 this is the score that i got here i got a score of 17,194 and compared this to what I had on beta 4 I had 17,199 on beta 4 so it's short by like a three single unit which is not much it's not the different that you're going to notice coming from beta 4 so performance wise it's more or less the same when it comes to GPU but CPU wise it is way better than beta 4 so it's a plus you can see the build number is more stable we have an a build number at the end so that's good and instability wise you can see that it's taking effect and also in the background of this update it has a lot of security updates which is a plus now when it comes to when we can expect this update let me quickly show you so if we open the calendar you can see that this update was released on march 23rd here so now that we have weekly releases 
since macOS Big Sur 11.3 Beta 1 up to Beta 4, Apple was always releasing the beta updates after two weeks, but Beta 5 defies that and we now have weekly release cycles. So I would expect a release candidate next week from the between the 30th to the 2nd of um, uh, April around there. So in between that time, that's when we can expect uh, the RC, macOS Pixel 11.3 RC. Should the RC that is released that time be final, then we can sort of expect the final release on uh, perhaps the first or second week of April. That's when I expect this version to come out. Sometimes when Apple releases an RC, there are issues that still need to be addressed security wise mainly then when that happens Apple releases a second RC and then if that happens then we're looking forward you know for the RC2 to be released perhaps during uh, April 5th to like April 9th between that time and then the official version we are looking forward you know to it sometime between uh, the first week or second week of April. Now, basically, that's about it for me when it comes to macOS Pixel 11.3 Beta 5. If you like this video, please leave a like. And uh, whether you should update or not, I really feel like, you know, this is a very good update to update to. And even the update itself was very seamless. It took, you know, a very short time and the preparation didn't delay as some other previous beta. So the build number is stable and it's a good update in my opinion. And that's about it for me. If you like this video, please leave a like and stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.